And I want to believe uh, you agree with me that the team that has worked tirelessly on this deserves another warm round of applause. I mean, achieving all that ahead of their target is something that is absolutely impressive. So thank you all so much. All right, as I'd mentioned earlier, we are expecting some really engaging conversations today. And the session we're going to now um, is a keynote chat, which will focus on co-creating and collaborating for success. The session will provide invaluable insights uh, from Kim's senior strategic advisor, that's Ro um, uh, Roger Bird, and Benson Kimithi, the USAID's officer responsible for Kim implementation. Um, they will share lessons learned from successful collaboration and co-creation with USAID and other partners. And to lead this particular session will be George Mbithi. Uh, George is the communications director, USAID's Kenya Investment Mechanism. I'll introduce him briefly before he starts. George is a dynamic corporate and development communications professional and has been leading strategic communications and stakeholder engagement at USAID's Kenya Investment Mechanism. He's a proven leader in driving the development and implementation of successful communication strategies and skilled in crafting engaging content for digital and traditional media platforms. Let's give him a warm round of applause as he kicks off this keynote chat. Thank you, thank you very much, Terian. I almost uh, listened to that introduction, like, who is that guy? Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Terian. And so, as she has said, we are going to have a keynote chat, and uh, it's my pleasure to welcome on stage uh, Roger, uh, Roger Bad. Um, Roger is our str uh, str senior strategic um, advisor. He has been part of the project for, uh, is it from year one? No, ye yes, sometimes in year one. And um, so, uh, of course, having worked in the program for quite some time, he has some invaluable insights to offer. Thank you very much, Roger, and uh, Karibu. And uh, now I'm also going to ask uh, Benson Kimithi, uh, the, USAID, uh, the USAID's officer in charge of uh, implementation of the project, oversees the project from uh, USAID side. I will ask him to join us on stage. Thank you, Waringa, for the assistance. I can see. <laughs> uh, so, Karibu Sana Benson. Uh, the conversation is actually between these two folks, yeah? And uh, so we, what, what we're going to be talking about is really co-creation and collaboration. And I do not know, uh, you know, having been part of the project for almost four years, where there are other better two people who can actually speak about this and speak about it confidently. And so um, we are going to get right into it, Roger. Uh, you have a mic just next to you. And I, you know, I would like us to start with the beginning, Roger. When you first came, you know, how was it really? Uh, how did you go about establishing, um, establishing that relationship with USAID? Because you were new to you know, the mission here, you know, we were new to the projects implementing partners and everyone. How, did you, how was it uh, going to establish that relationship, Roger? You know, I thought you were going to give me the easy questions. <laughs> That's the easiest I have today. <laughs> uh, well, first of all, welcome everyone. Uh, it's really great to see some longtime friends and gather today. So, you know, I think the thing that was most challenging in the very beginning was simply coming new to a program. Um, uh, I was actually new to Palladium, the implementer, and when I arrived, I had with me um, the mandate from more of the implementing partners' side of the perspective. And then when I arrived, uh, now I have to blend that with the side of understanding the mission side of it. And I think that the challenge there is simply, uh, in the very beginning, making sure that 
that everybody is happy. You know, what I ultimately learned uh, is that as, as the COP of the project at that time, I actually sit between Palladium on one side and USAID on the other side trying to deliver a contract that was actually designed several years in a, uh, uh, previously. And so all of a sudden it was this, this idea from a implementer's perspective. So then I met Benson and, uh, and what I realized is that he kind of had his own agenda <laughs> from, from the USAID perspective. And that's where really some of the challenges I think really came, was then realizing that we both come from our own perspectives of how this project is to, to unfold. And it wasn't until we started communicating, and even as Vincent said earlier this morning, over communicating, uh, to be able to really understand what it is that the ultimate goal is and it's not about Palladium. It's not about USAID. It's about Kenya. And once Benson and I started communicating and getting down to that granular level, it became much, much easier. Well, thank you. Thank you. And uh, Benson, Rod is just speaking about communication. Uh, and I would like to understand from your perspective, from the USAID's perspective, how uh, can, can you just you know you you, you give us um, a specific um, instance where you saw some very clear communication from uh, Palladium or from the implementing partner and how that uh, you know that transparency and communication how it it really helped to see the success of collaboration with the project. So, st thank you so much, George, for having us here. Good morning, everyone. Yes, my name is Benson Kimidi, coming from USAID. <coughs> they call us CORs. I'm sure there's some of this jargon. <laughs> Especially when you're not from USAID, you struggle to get what they mean. We are supposed to be representatives of the contracting officer. Another one we use is AOR, which is supposed to be uh, 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 whatever, agreement, Repres officer representative. <laughs> so we represent the contracting officer or the agreement officers at USAID in terms of implementing the project. And this is mainly from the technical side of things where we provide direction to the projects so that they can deliver the, the mandate, the project they have been given. And just, uh, George, just to step back because before I talk about communication, uh, before communication, there is something which the CEO or the contracting officer will always tell us when they tell you you are now the contracting officer representative, they tell you what they care about is performance. Okay? So it's very clear that uh, you can dilly dally with other things, but the contracting officer will also will always want you to deliver the project in terms of performance. So going back to your question, after performance, then the next thing you think about is how to communicate when performance is happening. So that's very critical. So when it comes to performance, uh, Kim, the way it was designed, was set up actually to perform because it's what we call cost plus award fee. Kim or Palladium more are they implementing the Kenya investment uh, contract or project. So it pay us only when we perform. So every year we sit down and ask, did, actually we normally ask them, can you basically, can you do a uh, appraisal of yourselves and tell us whether you delivered. We have an option of not paying or not uh, paying them. And we look at certain deliverables. That's the only way we, we pay them. So every time they are under pressure to communicate that delivery. So it's very important to do that. Something else I would like 
to also mention Kim went overboard every time, and if this is required in the contract, we are supposed to be getting quarterly reports. These are like four reports in a year. Kim, I think, is the first project in the mission, I don't know, like globally, to deliver updates every week. How many reports are those every week per year? <laughs> so this is a, this is a type of flexibility which, and uh, my colleagues at USAID will agree with me, I can, you can go to an implementer and ask them for a report and tell you, in my contract, I'm not required to give you that report. You can do that because there is a, there is a requirement and it's quarterly reports. Here is a project which is willing to give you weekly reports. And I'm sure all of us have been seeing, some, most of us have seen these reports. This is how flexibility and co-creation can deliver for a project because when the contracting officer is asking for performance, management, and it starts with the people we call office chiefs and goes all the way to the mission director, and even goes to their bazender. Then what they want to see is continuous communication of what is happening in the project. So in terms of uh, communication, I think that this experience I, I would share about Kim, which is very positive experience. Thank you. You know, you never said that those re weekly reports were optional. <laughs> <laughs> I've not said that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, George. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Benson. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of work to produce the weekly reports, <laughs> but uh, that is what it takes to, uh, to communicate. Um, Roger, it's evident from this conversation that um, uh, trust is really a cornerstone for successful partnerships. I, I would like you to just highlight um, how trust was established between Kim and USAID, and also how this mutual confidence influenced project decisions and overall outcomes. Yeah, thanks, George. Um, trust, you know, trust is earned, it's not given, and it's a two-way street. Um, in order to gain trust, you have to be trustworthy. And, and you know, I personally take that responsibility quite seriously. And to me, the way in which you earn trust is by saying what you'll do and then doing what you say. And I, I'm really quite proud of the Kenyan Investment Mechanism team in terms of understanding the importance of responsiveness to not only the, the bigger picture objective and agenda of, of the program from a standpoint of you know, work plans and deliverables and, and the timing, but also just simply in terms of the uh, ad hoc nature of requests of information that does come from USAID missions. And I, I think the part that well, Benson's the one that's going to be able to tell us if this is true. But I think the part that is uh, that really helped build some of that trust was recognizing that um, that our COR has a much bigger role in the USAID mission than just being an oversight manager of a project. And as we try to come to understand that, we can much better appreciate the fact of requests for information and questions about progress and who knows what that come from all different directions. It comes from the Office of Economic Growth. It comes from Health. It comes from WASH. It comes from the front office in the mission. It comes from Washington, D.C. You have a change in administration. All of a sudden, you have a change an approach of how projects or priorities are for, for projects. And so I think the trust factor comes when, when you can be responsive to address those elements 
and, and create that consistency so that you can be relied on. And I think that that's what I'm probably most proud of with the team in supporting that ability to communicate effectively for you, Save. Okay. Well, you want to add something to this, but <laughs> I, have a, I have a question for you. Um, I, I would like you to just think, talk about flexibility and adaptability. Do you have like an example of when these two came into play and how they affected, um, uh, you know, impacted the project's trajectory? Let, let, let me let me go to the to m on more on the flexibility uh, of the project and uh, state that. Uh, by Palladium accepting to, to implement Kim on a cost plus award fee was a very high risk. Because if the mission says you've not achieved results, you, you not get paid. And then I know there are instances where, for example, we were asked, we've, that we've worked for so many years and uh, within the finance sector and doesn't seem, and these are, I have to put a disclaimer here, these are personal observations, <laughs> not USAID. <laughs> <laughs> they are, we know entrepreneurs, business people have struggled for many years accessing finance. And because some of the finance we want entrepreneurs, and even small, like smaller farmers, who run agribusinesses. Some of the things they do are almost social enterprises. So when you are looking for finance and you are going to our financial institution, and our, I've seen our friend here from uh, ABSA, you are looking so for so so sort of social capital or development money. But financial institutions are keen on commercial money. So sometimes it's very tough to access this type of money. In development, you also want to look for money which is patient. Um, a lender will not come to you after a year or two years asking for their money. Can we have five years, 10 years, 15 years money for projects? And especially if we are talking about infrastructure. So when we challenged Kim to come up with a solution for more patient capital, and this is a very tough one, Kim was very open. They said, we are going to try the pension funds, for example. And we have a project where we are working with pension schemes and pension funds so that we can access more patient capital. And I know Kim went out beyond just financial institutions, which we have been very used to working with. And we have a very good partnership with the, the Kenya Funds uh, Consortium. And we can, we have seen a lot of, mm, a lot of uh, dollars mobilized for purposes of infrastructure. So what I'm, the point I'm trying to drive here is the flexibility of Kim to go into very enchanted areas, very challenging areas without fear. Knowing that what is at risk is even their payment, but didn't, they didn't fear going out and getting challenged. Another signature uh, in, in initiative Kim has been driving for the last uh, few years is working with the National Treasury to set up what we call a, a credit guarantee scheme. It's a tough one because the Treasury is a very big ministry, very busy people there. But Kim took the, the, took, took the courage and engaged the Treasury we are a very sensitive ministry because it's the go-to of every uh, embassy or every development organization here. And they have managed to push that agenda. And to date, I know tomorrow, today or tomorrow one of the represent, actually the head of that section is here, giving us the lessons we have learned. So what I'm trying to say here is the flexibility to take on very innovative and also very challenging and complex complex initiatives is something I have uh, witnessed with the, with the project. Thank you. 
Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, back, to you, back to you, Roger. You know, I, again, I said I've, I've been with the project for almost four years. And so I have also made my observations, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've observed some special rapport between you and Benson, some personal connection, some really understanding of each other. And, you know, sometimes I, I'm trying to produce uh, comms <laughs> material like, how do you think this will land with Benson? <laughs> so I, what I want to know is, when you, how, wh what was the contribution of that rapport? First, how was it? How did we get there? And what was its contribution to the success of Kim? So I think one of the most important things here is to recognize that um, communication really is key in order to understand how you can use your skill and expertise um, to deliver really what mission priorities are. You know, Benson's mentioned a couple of things that have opened up uh, as opportunities as the mission evolves and new priorities come online. You know, yes, there's some risk within the type of contractual side of things, but it's really much more of an opportunity since everything you say came to Kenyan Investment Mechanism and Palladium IV was uh, within scope. It all had to do with mobilizing capital, all had to do with expanding the market opportunities. And so I think that that, that, that intersection is the fact of the passion that Benson brought personally to the requests, it wasn't just, I mean, it, it was very clear that there were really great opportunities for Kenya to take on these, on some of these initiatives. And so I think one of the things that really helped us um, along the way was starting to do uh, touch bases every couple of, couple of weeks, at least two per month. And over coffee, outside of the embassy, outside of the Kenyan Investment Mechanism office, just a chance to have a, a space to be able to w walk through and discuss those, those areas. And for those of you who know me quite well, I'm quite passionate about things, and I have a, often a strong opinion. But Benson is also very passionate, and so I think that those touch bases were the the one key thing that helped unlock our ability to come together and uh, like start co-creating. Um, I remember from the very first time that we met, I was there to deliver a cost um, uh, plus award fee contract. So my mission was to deliver Palladium's uh, a contract, whereas ultimately what I learned was the more we co-created with USAID, the better opportunity we had for more global success for Kenya, and Palladium had a better opportunity for success as well. So I think that that was one of the key things that helped us, uh, and those weren't always fun, not all of them, but at the end of the day, what we um, have definitely developed, and I think what you're reflecting on, George, is there's a tremendous amount of mutual respect um, that uh, we each bring to the passion that we want to be able to see in terms of Kenya's growth. Okay, um, you know, uh, can I probe a little bit further? Um, you know, you do that the depends. touch bases, and um, you know, I, I think the, what I've observed, there is more to just the touch base, because or is the touch base what could make you even anticipate <laughs> what what question could actually come from Benson, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, the bottom line is you have to listen. I mean, you have to listen really, really carefully. And you have to weave your listening together with not just that one particular situation for that one particular day, but there are consistency, consistent messages that come across. I mean, um, one of the things that I loved about Mark Messick as the former mission director was he was very 
clear about what his strategies and objectives were. And they were, of course, the bigger picture because of his role and position. And then that has to trickle down ultimately through Benson and then to the pr project. So we have to listen very carefully to make sure that we can get that alignment. And, uh, and, and then, the, then the touch base, the value of the touch base is uh, reemphasizing, making sure that we're still on track, making sure that we're, we're moving in the direction. And it is a matter of over-communicating. It is a matter of co-creating along the way. And more importantly, I think, really just staying very flexible to make sure that we are, in fact, meeting the bigger picture objective. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when Kenyan Investment Mechanism first started, we had one funding stream under agriculture that we were gonna deliver in 17 counties under dairy, horticulture, and livestock. And we've ended this program with seven funding streams across East Africa. And so you can't get there without having a strong uh, co-creation uh, partnership that really has the longer range vision to deliver. Okay. Thank you. Um, Benson, is there something that Roger might have not touched? What, what you think really helped to create that rapport? Yes. Uh, thank you, Roger. Thank you, George. Yeah. Yes, there's something has not touched to the effect that uh, all was not good. <laughs> it's not a bed of roses. There are times I would tell Roger, you are going to do this, and then you tell me no. And I'll ask him why. You tell me it's not in the contract. And then I'll tell him, I'll put it in the contract. And then he says, <laughs> he says then I'll do it. <laughs> so those, and uh, our relationship, especially the contracting officer representatives and the COPs are very interesting because they vary from project to project. And uh, it's a relationship where suppose you're supposed to direct somebody, yet you need them to, to make sure there's a rapport, things that you are, you are able to deliver. So it's a very delicate instrument. But if you are able to strike that rapport, then you make a lot of progress. The other thing I would like to mention, because uh, we've talked about performance, we've talked about communication, that thing very important to USAID is something we call protocol. When every time an implementer is given a contract by the contracting officer representative, something follows very quickly, and that is normally a letter written by the contracting officer to the contracting officer representative. And it basically says exactly what they are supposed to do. Uh, if you are a COP or a project leader and you don't understand that everything you do must go through this representative and the CEO must be aware, every time you have to talk to anyone else in the mission, it doesn't matter whether you're talking about the mission director, office chief, and even their bazender, your contracting officer representative must know. You know, the other thing Roger did mention that he's too aggressive. <laughs> he's very aggressive. And you tell me, Benson, I want to talk to Mark today. I tell him, okay, just make sure. Every time you want to talk to the mission director, I am aware. Every time you want to talk to... And interestingly, he managed relationship with senior people at USAID from the office chief to the mission director, but he made sure that he would compare notes with me and I would tell him, so long as you have something to, you have a message to deliver, you are free. So it's very important for project leads, COPs, chief of parties, to, ma to manage this protocol thing. If you understand that very well, you never have trouble in terms of managing relationships. Thank you. Just wanted to add that. Uh, Roger, you look like you want to add something. Well, <laughs> Benson's comments have kind of activated me. <laughs> My aggressive nature. It's pr called proactive. 
It's, it's not. Okay, we did draw. <laughs> Thank you. We, yeah. We'll co-create that. So one of the things that's, uh, you know, when, when you sit in a leadership position on projects, a lot of times what it looks like out, out there is that the COP or the leadership is making decisions on their own and driving things forward. But the reality is, is that I never made any decisions without making sure that the COR was informed and on board and we were moving in the, in this, in the same path. And I think that that actually helps cr help create not only the success for, for Kenyan investment mechanism because that communication then was able to go back out to the team, but it was also I think is part of that factor that helped build that trust and that relationship so that we made sure that we were in fact delivering this project together. I might have at the time had a title of COP, but I was basically the co-implementer of this program. Um, it was not Palladium's program to be implementing, and I think that that's where IPs sometimes miss the understanding. This is uh, programs from the American people, and it is being delivered through the USAID program, and we're vessels in order to be able to make it happen. Okay, thank you very much, gentlemen, and uh, thank you. I think your insights are really key lessons to implementers and uh, the partners who are in here. That is it from us today, and uh, we wish you the very best in uh, the course of the event. Back to you, uh, Terian. Thank you. George, uh, Roger, and Benson, thank you so much. Let's give them another warm round of applause. That was quite a wonderful, wonderful session. And a few things stood out for me, and I'm sure they did um, for you as well. And just, you know, some of the highlights that I've picked from, you know, what it takes to have a great co-creative collaborative space. Communication is key. That's one of them. Passion, mutual respect, there's coffee here and there as well. Partnerships, managing relationships, and proactivity. So thank you so much, gentlemen, for setting this, the pace for our conversations. And uh, Kimithi did talk about the guarantee scheme, and that's one of the uh, things that will come out in one of the later sessions. Um, later today, and I am really looking forward to hearing more about that as well. So, gentlemen, thank you so much for setting the pace for our event this morning. All right, so the next part of our morning is actually the first panel discussion. Uh, George, George was very clear in telling me, and those of you who know George know how a perfectionist he is, and he said, it is a keynote chat. It is not a panel discussion. So this uh, next session is our first panel discussion of the day, and it will be on financial institutions collaboration with business advisors.